Okay, in Consumer Watch now, the meatless burger has caught the attention of vegans and environmentalists across the country. Not entirely vegan. <laughs> I always says that, but but you have tried those burgers and definitely. Stuff. Yeah. Now some companies are looking to bring fishless seafood to the table. This is actually different than a meatless burger. So right? what's the catch? What is the catch? <laughs> Unlike meatless burgers, which are largely plant-based, these companies are looking to create fish from live fish cells. So we're still talking meat, if you will. That means extracting cells from fish, growing them into a boneless, scaleless slab of muscle. I like the boneless. So far, <laughs> there are only three companies in the United States exploring this option. Most of them are five to ten years away from selling the product. But they say the goal is to alleviate overfishing, which has brought many species of fish to the verge of extinction. Experts are divided on whether any of this will actually help, and it's still not clear what effect eating this fish, in quotation marks, I guess, will have on humans. And it's not just something people have ever consumed before. So joining us now is the director of sustainable food for the World Wildlife Fund, Aaron McNevin. He's going to talk us through this. So Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. There's a lot we don't know about these companies and how they work. What are some of the concerns you have about them? Let's get that out of the way. Sure. Well, great to be with you, Emery Vlad. Uh, I, I think that I think that one of the key things about these companies is that they are they're operating under pretty controlled uh, intellectual property. Uh, and so th this is their secret sauce, so to speak. And we do need to understand what the impacts are of that secret sauce uh, while trying to be respectful of business. Uh, but I, I, I think that this is something that is a, a disruptive type of technology and something that should hopefully uh, cause the fishing industry to, to wake up to some of these challenges. Yeah, I, I, that's a really interesting point that you bring up about just how secretive they are. They have to be, they're competitive. But we're talking about a whole new type of science almost and, and sort of different than maybe growing. You Sometimes you hear about growing sort of heart muscles in a lab or something mm -hmm. along those lines. I think that happened recently. We're talking about something that the intention is for humans to consume. Um, but should it be safe and should it work out? Will it address the sustainability issues when it comes to overfishing? Fundamentally, the only thing that can really stop overfishing is better management of the fisheries, and that has to happen. But if you can figure out a way to substitute some of those pressures um, and also tap into other uh, components of the market, I think one of the things that we've found that's really interesting about, uh, about this type of cell culture of fish is that a, a lot of the Chinese consumers that consume this fish are really interested in this cell culture because of the purity. I mean, we have uh, tuna in the wild that are... Um, accumulating heavy metals, uh, PCBs. Um, so, so, in, so in fact, some of the pressure towards this end is for a safer product. And I think that if we're putting liver cells that are cultured into our bodies, and as you said, Anne-Marie, heart cells, I, I, I think that this, that this is a more controlled uh, type of growth of, of meat. So uh, we were just showing uh, images of plastic and pollution in our waters. Uh, last week, uh, the UN and other groups came out with a report that suggested that over a million different species are at the verge of being extinct. So we're talking about overfishing, the serious issue of overfishing. Um, uh, explain why this is happening and why hasn't it been stopped? Because, you know, it's easy. I think sometimes we, uh, the United States, here in the United States, we point fingers at Asian countries. They tend to do uh, the majority of the fishing, but uh, it's in the West that most of that produce and that fish, uh, those fish are consumed, uh, specifically, I guess, in Europe. I know the United States has cut back a little on, on eating uh, fish, but, but why hasn't this been addressed and what can be done to alleviate this problem? Well, I think, I think there needs to be just a tremendous amount of focus uh, on, on, on the notion of overfishing. I mean, if, if you're overexploiting a, a fish stock, um, you're, you're, you're basically kind of eating into your principal. I mean, that stock is renewable, and if you deplete it beyond its ability to replenish itself, um, you're, you're hurting your own business. But there's enough business out there that's in a smash and grab mode that's trying to make as much money as they can and accumulate as much wealth as they can. And a lot of these fish are so rare, it's a tremendous amount of money that they make. Uh, so I think a part of it is greed, of course, uh, and I think I think part of it is that 
this has always been a little bit out of sight, out of mind. I mean, it's a, it's, it's kind of devastating when you see this clear cutting of, of force. It's devastating to see all this waste in, in the water. But do, do people see what's happening to the actual fish stocks under the water? And I think that that's, you know, it's, it's easy to try to convince people that, oh, there's nothing wrong here. Um, but there actually is. And it, it, I think the clear reason, or the clear showing that there is a problem is that these companies really see an opportunity uh, to, make, to make money off of, off of non-traditional meat products. But I think, it's a, I think that the focus is a problem. But I, I guess from, from my perspective, even more so, that if these fishing companies are not going to do anything about this, uh, then is there a reason for environmentalists and folks to try to help improve them if there's an alternative out there? And I think that's the threat that I, that I feel is important about these products, if, if nothing else. Uh, if the taxi cab companies knew Uber was coming, uh, maybe they would have changed their ways. Mm. Uh, but instead, Uber just took over. And now you get a, a high-rated driver that you can tell their history. So it's just a more controlled environment. Right. A warning, a disruptor may be coming. Yeah. So maybe you want to sort of change the way you, you conduct business. That's right. Aaron mm -hmm. McNevin, thank you so much, Aaron. Hey, thank you, guys. Thanks, Aaron.